Hi, Luca, Kelly, and Enrique. Thank you so much for joining me for this week's symposium conversation. I'm so thrilled to be able to feature the three of you in collaboration. Um, and I wanted to start off this conversation by asking Enrique your inspiration for submitting this specific work to the symposium for this collaboration. Uh, there are many reasons, I guess, but it's really, it's, uh, I thought it was a painting about the times that we live in. It's, uh, it's based on a word, uh, apophenia, which is a tendency to see, to perceive meaningful connections between unrelated uh, objects or, or events. And I thought that in the, in the conspiratorial times that we're living in, it's, uh, it was sort of appropriate to, to start thinking about and painting about these, these issues that are unique. And um, I couldn't think of anybody better to, to work with than Luca and Kelly, people I've known and I, I consider dear friends and I'm great admirers of. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing that. So um, Luca and Kelly, how did you interpret this ap apophenia musically? Like take us through that process. Well, um, the process began with collecting various uh, various recordings of myself uh, improvising solo. And then um, some material was extracted from the archives of that daily practice to, um, to build a composition off of. And then um, I brought some seed ideas in to our, our open workshop uh, as actually our first collaboration on a particular composition. We played each other's music a lot, but this is the first composition that we've done fully together. And um, so I brought some seed, in, seed ideas in from those improvised recordings, and then we developed it together. And uh, he had the painting of, we had the painting of, we're lucky enough to have it in our, in our bedroom. And that's where his workstation is. So he was looking at the painting while he was, you know, doing these improvisations. And then when we collaborated, we had the painting in the room with us to, you know, be able to just look at it and feel its energy and, you know, build the ideas from, from it. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's really beautiful. And I'm wondering if um, this is, well, this is a rather general question, but what were the main or key sort of differences between having the painting as like a, a locus point in this musical collaboration versus when maybe you're improvising in a more abstract way um, without that kind of focal point? Well, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a pretty similar experience. It's just that when you're also allowing yourself to look at an image while doing it or be absorbed by that image while in the act of, of improvising, you, um, you know, you leave yourself open to, uh, to its influence and you leave yourself open to um, kind of uh, maybe subtly or not so subtly trying to evoke this sort of energy that, that it's giving off. I think the development of it was actually more the development of the piece and of the ideas and the melodies that I wrote over the top of his original improvisations, which tended to be like baseline oriented and like melodically oriented. And then I would put melodies over the top, like sort of juxtaposed, and then we'd kind of work through them together. And that process was extra influenced by the painting because um, luckily Enrique came over and we actually were able to have a discussion about his process in life and in, in painting and art and just like his whole philosophy and, and what the painting meant to him. And so then we were able to say, okay, here's the storyline. And it really has a full like beginning, middle and end of, of a story of something that's hidden in the painting. That's really nice. And um, I'm wondering, Enrique, Enrique, if you have, like, what was that process like for you to hear? Because you mentioned that you heard a bit of their final product already, right? Um, yes. So how does that feel? How did that feel to you? And what were your insights on well, that? Well, I was really hardened by it because I felt like I was uh, talking to uh, 
to like minds and people who actually, we, we talk the same language. And not just because we know each other, but because it's through music and art, uh, through visual arts and music, I think we, we speak the same language. And I wanted to create a painting. This above all is a, a painting that it's a sequential perception of it. it. It takes time to sort of, to eat it and to digest it, to resolve it. And I think that's what a, a musical piece does. It resolves over time. And uh, it's not, you don't know what it's, it's gonna end up when it, when it begins. So I, I, I thought it was an appropriate piece to work with because it, when you first approach the piece, you see one thing and then as you live with it and you stay with it, uh, it starts to divulge information and ideas. And um, much like a piece of music, it resolves itself or it doesn't resolve itself, but there is an attempt in the process. Well, it's so wonderful to be able to feature the three of you. Is there anything else you'd like to add about what this collaboration has been like for you? No, I just said uh, it's it's been it's wonderful to just to think about paintings in, in time like that and and um, and have a sort of a platform or an idea where where somebody actually looks at your work for a long time and, and sort of comes up with a reaction to it. It's such a, I'm so lucky to have that happen because that is so rare when you have make a painting, people look at it and they mumble a thing or two about it, then they go on and it gets hung up and they either forgotten or, you know, or just sort of get, they get used to it. My, uh, my highest hope for this painting is that generations down the road, some little kid is gonna be living with that painting in his bedroom and, and on a moonlit night it's gonna, the light's gonna shine on it just right. And all of a sudden he's gonna crawl out, tiger, tiger. And his family will know exactly. They'll, they'll have a story to tell him about that painting. <laughs> so it's not that I wanna scare a little kid, but I just. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can I could see that staying in the family and just like having a myth or a story about it for, for generations, hopefully. Well, I imagine there's uh, maybe a couple of points in our composition that may well scare a little kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all so much for your time and for having this conversation. And I'm so excited to share this with our audiences. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah, thank you.